China is threatening war over Taiwan, but a recent donation of U.S. COVID vaccines makes that seem a little less likely. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Well, it's something that doesn't happen every day. A bipartisan group of U.S. senators took a military aircraft to visit Taiwan. The three senators arrived on a U.S. Air Force C-17 freight plane. They came to Taiwan to announce a donation of 750,000 U.S.-made COVID vaccines. But the real message was delivered to China in the form of a U.S. military transport plane capable of transporting troops and cargo. Cargo like artillery, battle tanks, and helicopters. Taiwanese media reported that it was the first C-17 visit since at least 1995. Meanwhile, a favorite Chinese state from media, the Global Times, said it was the most serious provocation since U.S. President Joe Biden took office. Which, of course, is just a fancy way of saying that it angered China. The arrival of three U.S. senators in Taiwan bearing COVID vaccines is part of the U.S. playing catch-up at vaccine diplomacy. The Chinese Communist Party has been selling its COVID vaccines around the world. Selling, not donating. And those vaccines come with many strings attached. Those strings include being politically obedient to the Chinese regime. Which is why, even though Taiwan is struggling with a COVID-19 surge, it's still refusing Chinese vaccines. And with good reason. China's trying to use COVID vaccines for political leverage in Taiwan. China cut off Taiwan's access to Germany's BioNTech shots. And when Japan donated 1.2 million vaccines to Taiwan, China said Japan was using the vaccines as a tool of political self-interest. The party loves to accuse others of doing what it does. I'd say it's a guilty conscience, but I don't think the Communist Party feels guilt. But the Biden administration is now making a push to donate COVID vaccines to the world. Donate, not sell. Unlike China. And one U.S. official said U.S. vaccines don't come with strings attached. Senator Tammy Duckworth, one of the senators who visited Taiwan, said Taiwan is getting first dibs. It was critical to the United States that Taiwan be included in the first group to receive vaccines because we recognize your urgent need and we value this partnership. The Chinese Communist Party hates when the U.S. recognizes Taiwan like this. But China's response to this visit has been surprising, and it has many Chinese citizens infuriated. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So as you can imagine, the Chinese Communist Party is not happy about U.S. senators visiting Taiwan in a military aircraft. Chinese jets have been making daily incursions in Taiwan airspace for months. China considers Taiwan part of its territory. And my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, calls this latest move by the U.S. and Taiwan salami-slicing tactics. They're accusing the U.S. and Taiwan of using small actions to get closer diplomatically, slice by slice. And the Communist Party knows about salami slicing since they're using it to take over more territory in the South China Sea and on the Indian border. The Communist Party also doesn't get irony. So as this Global Times editorial asks, how should the mainland respond? Turns out, by doing nothing. Nada. Zip. State media, including the official Xinhua News Agency, didn't report on the trip while the Chinese Foreign Ministry sidestepped a question about the plane. But later, Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin broke out his inner wolf warrior with this incendiary rhetoric. The U.S. should avoid sending any wrong signal to Taiwan independence separatists and causing further damage to China-U.S. relations and peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. These are the same people who have been threatening to invade Taiwan for years, right? In 2005, China passed a law saying it had the right to use non-peaceful and other necessary means to prevent Taiwan from formally declaring independence. Chinese state -run media have threatened war if U.S. military aircraft go to Taiwan. They said that would be crossing China's red line. 
It threatened to destroy the Taiwanese airport, the U.S. aircraft, and start a war. Well, I don't see a war starting. Could it be the Chinese Communist Party was just bluffing? That it's all bluster? A bully who backs down at the first sign of pressure? I'm shocked, as were many of China's nationalistic youth. Was all that talk of a red line in war just that? Talk? One popular Weibo comment, China's version of Twitter, said, Our red line is no red line. If this is the case, how can foreigners treat Taiwan as part of China? Another online commenter said, This is a salami slicing move that is continuously pressing your red line. Maybe China's wolf warrior is just a sheep in wolf's clothing. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support us and our efforts to expose the truth about the Chinese Communist Party by contributing through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Banana Pancakes asks, So is she going to go Handmaid's Tale to solve China's population problem? This was in response to my recent episode about China's new three-child policy. After decades of the one-child policy, and then the brief two-child policy, the Communist Party is now allowing Chinese people to have three children. That's after it became clear all those forced abortions and sterilizations have caused a population crisis. Except, as I mentioned in that episode, Chinese people don't really want more kids. In fact, many want no kids. Intense workplace competition, inadequate childcare, and widespread job discrimination against pregnant women have made childbearing an unappealing prospect for many. So, will the Chinese Communist Party resort to handmaid's tale tact? in the sense of how a small group of elite men suppress the population, forcing the lower class to work in dirty, dangerous conditions, it's already doing that. But will it start forcing women to have children? Well, considering under China's family planning policy, women had their menstrual cycles recorded on blackboards for all to see, I don't think the Communist Party has an ethical problem with getting right up in people's personal business. In fact, they don't see it as your personal business, they see it as the state's business. So I really wouldn't be surprised if one day the three-child policy goes from a recommendation to a requirement. In fact, I talked about how the party could start forcing people to have babies in this recent episode. Thanks for your question and your support, Banana Pancakes, and a big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your questions on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.